hi welcome back to the module functions in this video we will be discussing the ways to pass a parameters to user defined functions so first let me explain the types of parameters there are two types of parameter the first is actual parameter and the second one is formal parameters so let me show in example here i have taken one simple example you can see in the main i am calling one user defined function function add so when we will call any user defined function in the main it is called as calling function and the parameters which we will specify here which we will write here are called actual parameters and this is the user defined function as this function is getting called in the main program it is called as call functions and the parameters which we will mention here which we will write here are called formal parameters there are two ways to call any function we can call by value and we can call by reference so first let's consider the call by value to explain the concept of call by value i have taken one simple example that is swapping of two numbers the concept of this program i have already explained in the module c basics but here i am using function to write the same program as you know the first step is the function declaration so i have declared one function in which i am passing two parameters the next step is to write the function definition here we write the actual code as you know the concept how to swap the two variables using third variable these are the three steps now let's call this function from the main now before i call swap function in the main program i have to print the values before swapping i am using the printf statement for printing message as well as to print the value of the two variables before swapping now i am calling this user defined function from main now i have to print these two values after swapping why we are doing this because we are implementing the concept of function call by value this is the default way of calling a function here the actual argument are copied to the formal argument so a will become x and b will become y so whatever changes you will do in the user defined function will not get reflect back copies of variable will get created in a different memory locations now let's save the file and click on build and run and check the output as you can see in the output before swapping the value of a is 10 and b is equals to 20 and after swapping also the values are same it is not swapped because in call by value the copies of variables will be created and whatever changes will do that will get affected on the copy not on the original values that's why the original values are same there is no change in the original values so this is the concept of call by value hope you understood this topic there is one more way of function call that is call by reference so let me demonstrate how to use this concept using a program here again i have considered the same program of swapping of two numbers first let me design the main so that i can better explain the concept i have initialized the two values a and b and before swapping we are printing the two values now next i am going to call that function you can see here i am calling the function by sending two parameters whenever we declare any variable and initialize the value to it it will store at a particular memory address and if we want to take that memory address we can use ampersand sign so in call by reference actually we are sending the address of that variables to the user defined function to accept the address we need special type of variable that is a pointer variable which we will specify with the star so what is actually pointer pointer is a variable which stores the address of another variable don't bother so much about pointer i will be covering this topic in the coming videos that's why i have mentioned here integer star 
because it is accepting the address we have to declare here a pointer variable so a and b are the actual parameters and x and y are formal parameters so in call by reference actually we are sending the reference or we can say address now let me write the code for swapping again these are the simple three statements with the help of that we are swapping the values but here we are taking in the pointer variables now after swapping procedure again i am going to print the values now save the file and click on build and run to check the output you can notice in the output before swapping the value of a was 10 and the b was 20 and after swapping this a is equals to 20 and b is equals to 10 that's why in call by reference whatever changes we do in the functions will reflect back to the main because it is working on the address it means we are referring the actual values hi welcome back to the module functions in this video, I will be explaining about recursion and even we will implement the concept of recursion using program. So what is recursion? Recursion is a process in which a function calls itself. So we need to be careful to define an exit condition from the function. Let's take an example. Here you can see this is a main program in which we are calling one user defined function and in user defined function we are calling again the same function so the function is calling itself again what are the advantages it reduces the unnecessary calling of functions and can solve many problems in easy way but there are some disadvantages too it is difficult to trace means it is difficult to debug and understand and it requires more processor time and we should be always careful to terminate the functions otherwise it will execute infinite time so let's understand how to implement the concept of recursion in program here i have taken the example to calculate the factorial of a number but we are implementing the concept of recursion you can see here main i am taking one integer value number and we are passing it to the function so this is the function declaration and now we have to write the function definition here is the code if the value of n will be 1 or 0 we will get the answer 1 as you know the factorial of 1 and 0 is 1 so first let's check the output for these two values click on build and run i am going to enter 0 you can see the output the factorial of 0 is 1 now let's check for 1 you can see here the factorial of 1 is 1 so both these conditions are getting satisfied now let's check for another number so take an example of 3 if we will pass the number 3 the value of n will be 3 so it is not 1 and 0 it will come to this statement and here we are calculating n into factorial of n minus 1 here you can see we are calling the same user defined function inside the function that is the concept of recursion that is function calling itself so how this will get executed see the steps n into factorial of n minus 1 that is 3 into factorial of 2 so again the function will get call and next time the value will be 2 minus factorial of 2 minus 1 means 2 into factorial of 1 and as you know the factorial of 1 is equals to 1 so the value will get replaced and we will get 3 into 2 into 1 is equals to 6 you can check the conditions here too when the value of 0 and 1 we will get 1 when the value of n is greater than 1 we are going to use the concept of recursion in which we are calling the function again with some different parameters so let's check the output click on build and run now i am going to enter 3 so you can see here we are getting the answer factorial of 3 is 6 you can even try some more program using the concept of 
recursion you can try the program to generate fibonacci series using recursion so in this video we learned the concept of recursion and how to implement it in the next video i will be covering one more important concept of c programming that is arrays so keep learning keep coding see you in the next video